Hey everybody, it's Dr. Galvin for tonight's uh, coronavirus update. Uh, sorry about the late uh, posting of this. Uh, been a busy day, kind of getting used to the whole telehealth thing with our clinic patients, which is a bit of an, an adaptation. It's actually, it's actually not so bad. I, you know, I, I, people that come to see me know I spend a lot of time with people and the telehealth doesn't really change that. I still spend a lot of time with people. Um, and it's a little bit more casual because like people are in their pajamas and stuff when I'm talking to them, which is kind of fun. Um, but anyway, numbers today, uh, a million, we've crossed the million threshold worldwide for cases. Um, so greater than a million today, 52,000 deaths, but 210,000 recoveries. So that's great. In the U.S., 243,000 cases. Uh, 5,800 deaths. Um, we've got about 10,000 people have recovered. Here locally, we're up to 1,800 cases, 16 deaths. So what are we gonna talk about today? Well, we're gonna talk a little bit about immunocompromise and other risk factors for um, the disease. We're gonna talk about um, super infectors, these people that, are, that may be more infectious than other people. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about mindset in terms of what to do about this and, and what time frames that we're kind of realistically talking about. And then I've got some good news about reinfection rates. So um, there's interesting data coming out of, out of China and that shows sort of this older propensity for, for patients. And then we're looking at some Western countries, especially the US, and we're seeing a lot of younger people, a lot of deaths and severe disease between the ages of 25 and 50. And it turns out, it's starting to look like obesity may well be the missing link here. Not a lot of obesity in China, lots of obesity here. And it looks like obesity may well be an independent risk. And along with the obesity goes with prediabetes and metabolic syndrome and hypertension and abnormal lipids and cardiovascular disease. So those are all we know risks for COVID for developing severe disease. And so folks that have obesity early on, um, those younger people may be a big risk. And we'll talk a little bit about more about that at the end. Um, interestingly, some data came out of China that showed that people are, are classically immunocompromised. Maybe people have had cancer or um, maybe have autoimmune diseases. They're not showing that those people are increasingly, excessively high risk compared to some of the other things, diabetes, hypertension, and other things. Um, that may be in part because of the way the virus works and it attaches to these ACE2 receptors, which are found you know, predominantly in the cardiovascular system and pulmonary system. But that's good news for people who may have recovered from cancer or maybe immunocompromised in some way. It doesn't seem like they are, are a huge extra risk compared to some other risk groups. Um, I think that there's an interesting article out of Korea about people who may be super infectors. And so super infectors are some who are like really, really contagious. And there was a, a study at the Samsung Hospital in, somewhere in Korea where they had somebody go into the emergency department that was one of these, you know, they determined later to be a super infector um, who produced tons and tons of virus. And there were 60 people in the emergency department, 45 people caught it from this one person during their short stay in the emergency department and two of those people died. So this idea of super infectors is, is maybe an important concept and may go get back to that idea we talked about yesterday, uh, potentially wearing, wearing masks out in public, not to protect you typically from breathing things in, but from you, if you've got it, from breathing out and infecting other people. You know, we worry about aerosolized spray, and I, I talked about that yesterday, and I realized as I was looking back through some of the comments and some messages I got, that the idea of aerosolized spray, what does that really mean? And I, I tried to think of a good example, and I, I this is what I want you to think of. You know how when you um, are sitting in your living room and like the curtains are open and the sun gets to like a certain point and you look up and you see like, you're like, oh my gosh, there's a lot of dust floating around in here. And you have the light hits it just right. You see all these suspended particles. That's an aerosolized particle. So those are dust particles that are suspended in the air. They're light. And they're kind of floating around your room. No matter how clean it is, it's there. Um, and you can breathe those in. And so when we talk about aerosolized virus particles, you cough things out, they, they do the same thing. They can get suspended, more so if you're in a hospital setting. So it's particularly worrisome for healthcare workers. Um, in terms of how we have to think about what's going on, um, Peter T is a great doc, he has a great podcast, and, and one of his guests used this, and I'm gonna steal it from him. Um, he, he said basically that 
our battle against this virus is a game of chess, not checkers. It's a, it's, it's a game where we need to be looking multiple moves ahead, and we're playing it like checkers. We're, we're looking one move ahead, and we've got to understand that this is going to be a, a long-term thing until it's completely gone. And realistically, you know, virus transmission is not going to drop until probably 60% of the population is immune. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means either we're immunized or we've had it. So once you get the virus, we're hoping that it won't, you know, you won't be able to get it again. So think about that. So you may well see where we have these tight restrictions for six, eight weeks. We may relax them a little bit, and then they may come back in. It may get to the point where we tell people, you know what, if you're a low risk person, then maybe you go back to work because if you do get sick, it's, you're less likely to have a problem. But if you're a high risk person, we may need to keep you out of the workforce for a while. I don't know how long that's gonna take. And then what may well happen is once we relax restrictions, we may have another outbreak and it may come back again. So remember, it's a long-term thing. And you know, we got all these models, but you know, all models are wrong. They, they, they ultimately are all proven wrong because we can't have perfect data to input into them. But a lot of them can provide us good information, and so we should use those. Um, on the good news front, though, there was a study that came out where they infected a bunch of uh, rhesus monkeys with the virus, and they respond very similar to humans do in terms of this virus. And they all had it, for sure. They knew that they had it, and then they all had recovered, meaning that they had recovered, they tested them, they cultured them, didn't culture out any, any viruses. They were PCR negative, so the, the regular test that we use is polymerase chain reaction test that the viral tests use was negative, and they were IgG positive, and that's the antibody that you make to fight off a virus if you've had it. So they had these monkeys that had the disease, they clearly did not have it anymore, but they made antibodies like, like humans do, and then they re-exposed them, meaning they, they again give them a big dose of virus, and none of them got sick again. So that's a pretty good hint that there's at least you know some long-term immunity. So your chance of Coming down with it and then getting it again is pretty low, which is really, really um, good news. Um, on the good news front, I want to try to keep some positive stuff here. You know, we've got an increasing number of people who are, are um, recovering. Um, the PPE situation is still not good, but um, I have to say a shout out to my friend Derek Pegram, who gave me an entire case of N95 masks today that I'm going to take to the hospital. And uh, Julie Nastuff McLaughlin, who I went to high school with, who also works in a great place, Ben and Jerry's, has donated 100 um, coupons for free pints of ice cream to the emergency department staff. So they're going to be excited when we hand those out. So thank you very much. Again, if you have masks, keep handing them out. You don't have to give them to me. Give them to EMS or your police officers or, or whoever. Um, you know, I, I run this, you know, age management longevity, human performance clinic, and we, we focus on really optimizing lifestyle to make people live longer. And a lot of the things that we do actually, you know, are we fix things that are at risk for, for COVID, obesity, hypertension, diabetes. So I am gonna be posting the first um, uh, wellness thing about uh, psychological health for kids um, tonight or tomorrow morning. But I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to work on those risk factors. For you, and if you have family members or friends that have problems with those things, I'm gonna focus some of the wellness stuff on how do we reverse diabetes, how do we get rid of hypertension, how do we you know, reverse um, obesity, what things we can do on your own without a lot of fancy stuff, how do we get people healthier so that you're at less risk um, for developing the severe side effects of this disease. I'll be back tomorrow. Um, again, I apologize about the late start tonight. Um, I will see you later. As always, wash your hands, take care of yourselves, take care of your families, take care of everybody around you, and I'll see you tomorrow.